Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 227 for the 8th of Tammuz and a leap year. So if you've been following along these episodes so far, and if you listen to yesterday's episode in particular, you might be feeling, hopefully, if you listen to the episode slowly, maybe taking notes and really thinking about the ideas that you're coming to understand, maybe things are coming together. Maybe you're trying to, you're coming to really get somewhat of a grasp on how all of this creation stuff works, how it is that God brings the world into being through the letters, which has been the subject of the last few episodes. So in today's episode, we're actually going to be brought back down to earth. And the Alter Rebbe is going to tell us that we actually have no idea (laughs) how this happens. And as much as we try to conceptualize and as much as we try to really try to understand the process of creation and, and relate and make this relatable to us in certain ways, we can only do this so far. And our intellect and our minds can only take us so far. And that ultimately there's the the ultimate aspect of God, the ultimate sense of who God is and how it is that God brings creation into being is something that's actually beyond our scope. And that when we use these different analogies, these different ways that we can relate to the process and to different aspects of God, we always need to remember that these are merely analogies. So this is something that we had brought up previously, and you may have sensed a theme so far in the Tanya. I've definitely noticed this in putting together these episodes, that there's really a lot of back and forth in this way throughout the Tanya, where on the one hand, the Ultra Rebbe is inviting us to use our intellects and to really try to understand God, understand our creator, understand ourselves in the context of this world of reality, and to really Really stretch our brains to the limits of trying to understand this, but then to also recognize at the same time that this is actually an impossible feat. And so if, it, if it's really impossible, why do we do this? Well, that's a bigger subject for another time, but in, in short, it's basically this is, this is what is called upon us to do, to really try to understand God, to know God. This is the first thing that the Rambam mentions in his book, the Yara Chazaka, the Mishnah Torah, is he tells us that we, the first, the foundation of all foundations is to know God. But then again, it's the paradox part of the knowing is the recognition of what it is that we don't know and that ultimately we can never really know. So this is what, where we're going to be at today. We're in the realm of the unknown. This is where what the altar is going to explore. And the reason why we're going there is it's, it's, uh, it's a continuation of yesterday. So we're, we're going to be concluding a chapter that we began yesterday, chapter 11 of Shari Yochud Muna. And in this chapter, we've been discussing this idea of the letters of speech through which God creates the world and how we see that specifically, we've spoken about this quite a bit in this section of the Tanya, how it is that that God specifically speaks the word world into being. When you look at the creation as written in the story of Bracious, we see that there are specifically 10 utterances through which God brought the, brought the world about into being, into creation. And we learned that this was not just a one-time event. This is something that's happening constantly at all times. And yesterday we began to explore what we mean by this, what we mean by this idea of speech and um, and speaking the world into being, what this means. And we related this to our speech and we related it to the fact that whenever we want to express ourselves, express our own emotions, our own emotive attributes, this needs to come about through the process of letters, of speech. It always initially has to begin in terms of speech within our thoughts, like letters of thought where we have a dialogue within ourselves and we plan how it is that we want to go about expressing our emotions. And sometimes it comes about in more explicit verbal speech where where it's actually, uh, we, we actually speak the words out loud to express how we're feeling on the inside. And we said that through this, we can come to understand that when we talk about God's speech, what we mean is it's not that he's literally moving his lips the way that human beings move their lips. Uh, God forbid, like God's not a corporeal being in that sense. But just like for us, speaking is a way, whether it's 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 
thinking in, in letters or speaking in letters in a verbal, audible way. Speaking basically is the process of expressing one's internal attributes. This is what God is doing. When we say that God is speaking, God speaks the world into being, what we really are trying to say is we're saying that God is expressing his himself, expressing his internal attributes. So this is where we're left off with, and this is where we're going to begin today. And what what the altar, but what the theme of today is going to be is that really, really emphasizing the facts that as much as we call it speech for God, as much as we talk about God speaking the world into being, and we, we use the same phrase that we use for ourselves, we really need to be clear that this is not the same thing as our speech. So that a person might think that, okay, so like, if you've been following along these episodes so far, you might have started to create a sort of map of the various, the makeup of, of these different ideas. Like, let's say if you, if you think about a person, right? So we talked about how an, in, in a person, their highest attribute is the attribute of will. So there's this aspect of their will that translates into their intellect, their, uh, their, you know, we could say their IQ maybe, but maybe other aspects of it, their creativity, like their intellectual abilities. That's what we know as the chokhmah bina das of the person. And then we know that this expresses itself in its emotive attributes, which are one step below that. So there's like a hierarchy with this. There's the will on top. Then below that is the intellect. Then we have the emotions, the emotive attributes. Then below that is the thought. So where these emotive attributes actually express itself in thinking about how to express these things. And then below thought is speech. And then below speech is action, right? So a person might think of this map and, and visualize this map in their head, and they might come to the erroneous conclusion that, okay, if speech is below thought, then that means when we talk about God's speech, that means God's speech is on that same level as our speech. It's below our thought. And what we're going to learn about today is how this is totally not true. This is entirely false. In fact, God's speech is actually way, way, way above our intellects, way, way, way above our minds, above our chokhmah, above our bina and above our das, because God actually is the one who brought our intellects into being right? So it only makes sense that he would be above all of these things. And so when we're talking about the map of man versus the map of God, these are like totally different realms. They are completely removed from one another, having really, it's it's not comparable at all. So that's basically what we're going to focus on today. And so I think it's a good time now to get into the text and see how the ultra above explains all of this. And so here we go. So this is again, the, the, the second part of chapter 11 of Shari Chudba Muna, which begins like this. Uh, it starts off and it says that, but in true truth, the aspect of the letters of speech above the supernal letters, letters of speech is way, way, way above the le- the level and the beingness of the Chokhmah and the Seichel, the wisdom and the intellect of the created beings. Because in the in the utterance and the letters that were used, so that's the section of the aspect of creation where man was created, where it says, we'll make man in our image. This is how man was created, who has wisdom and who has intellect. So meaning to say, the, po- the point that the author was trying to bring here is the fact that this intellect that we think of as being so lofty, our intellect and our wisdom, is actually merely nothing but a creation of God, that God created through letters and speech and through through speaking him into being and then the altar goes on and even not only through speech but we we actually see that man was created through breath through the supernal breath as it's written which uh, and that's that's from brachis chapter 2 verse 7 which literally means that god breathed into his nostrils a soul of life so we know that man was actually different than other creatures in the sense that our soul was not spoken into us but it was actually breathed into us. So the bottom line is that the source of our intellects and the source of our uh, of our wisdom comes from God's breath as well as from his words, from his speech. As the origin of the first man, Adam Harishon, the, the origin of his intellect and of his wisdom came from this speech and from this uh, and from this breath of God. And this soul of this original man, this Adam Harishon, contains within it all of the souls of all of the tzaddikim, which are greater than the ministering angels. 
So, but the main point is that as great as these souls are, they, even the souls of great Tadikim and the soul of the original man, Adam Harishan, they, they have a source and their source is in the letters of God and in, in the breath of God. And then the re and and the reason why these letters are so high that these letters transcend even the level the level of the souls of the great tzaddikim is because these letters what are they really they are the divine flow like the the manifestation of the power and vitality that come from God's attributes from God's holy attributes which what are these attributes as we learned before these attributes are unified with His being in essence with utmost unity which is way far over and above the, the level of Chochmah that's found in the created beings. And that's when we refer to these things as letters, we're not talking about them as letters in relation to created beings, the way that we think of letters, right? But we're actually talking about it as like in relation to God. We're, what, what we mean when we use this term letters is we mean that these are 22 different types of flows, different types of vital uh, flows of energy and vitality that each one of these 22 different types of like influences are different one from the other and through these different 22 different influences this is how all of the supernal and the lower worlds and all of the creations that are found within these worlds were created because this is what arose in the will and wisdom of God to create the world out of these two and these 22 different types of influences, not more and not less. So specifically the 22 types of influences. And these are the 22 letters, which are fixed in the mouth and in the tongue as is as is written in Sefer Yitzhak. So the way the Sefer Yitzhak describes it is that these 22 letters are fixed in the mouth and the, the tongue, meaning to say there's not more, there cannot be more than 22 letters and there cannot be less. Hashem decided that there should be exactly 22 letters. And then in brackets, the Ultra says that when you look at their, uh, their, uh, their image, like the form of the letters, like the actual, like when you write them, then this is, it's not random. It's not like just like a random thing that a toff looks like a toff and aleph looks like an aleph, but it actually gives an illustration of what this flow looks like. And this will be explained later on, says the Alter Rebbe. And so the way that we can understand this, that letters basically like are the idea of flow of influence is because we see that even for a person, even for man, for us, when we think about the letters of speech and thought in the soul of man, these are the f flowing from the, these are flows from the, uh, from, from the mind and from the different attributes that we have inside of our soul from their being in essence, as will be explained elsewhere. So that's the end of the section. So just to kind of sum that up is like the basic bottom line is that when we talk about this idea of God's speech and God's letters and that the whole world is being created through letters and speech and all that stuff, we really need to remember that this isn't that it's not the type of speech that we think about is in terms of speech. God's speech is something totally different and something much, much, much higher than who we are. So it's like for us, when we talk about our speech, we understand that our speech is stemming from our intellects and from our minds. But that's that's the original like source of where it comes from. But then God's speech is the one that created our intellects and our minds. So it's actually way above the level of intellect and mind, at least in terms of our perspective. But the reason why we call it speech, the reason why we call it letters is that just like for us, our speech and the letters of our speech flows from our minds. And that's how we're able to speak is because we, to speak and to, to have language and say different things is because it flows from our intellect. So this, so letters can basically be thought of as like a flow of energy and a flow of vitality. And so when we talk about the divine letters of speech, we're basically saying that these are 22 divine types of flow of energy and vitality through which God shows to create all of the worlds and everything contained within them. So that is the end of uh, chapter 11, and tomorrow we're going to move on to chapter 12, which is the final chapter of Shariah Muna. So stay tuned and stick with it, and I will speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast, hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Abraham Yitzhak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, Please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, 
Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow. And until then, have a great day.